There are currently around 63 million people living in the UK. About 20% of these people smoke cigarettes. All of them are willingly putting themselves at risk. Smoking kills over 100,000 people in the UK each year. This accounts for one-fifth of all UK deaths. On average, smokers lose about 10 years of their life. One half of all smokers will eventually be killed by their addiction. Smoking accounts for over one-third of respiratory deaths and over one-fourth of cancer deaths. Smoking kills. But you already know that. You've been bombarded with ads and posters about how bad smoking is for you, about the dangers it carries, the numerous effects it has in your life, and the fact that if you smoke, there's a very high chance that it will eventually kill you. It even says this on every cigarette packet we buy, but we don't want to talk about how smoking kills smokers. We want to talk about how smoking kills others. Passive smoking is a huge problem in the UK, and all around the world for that matter, and is something that is massively overlooked. It's the cause of roughly 165,000 cases of diseases among children each year, including heart disease and lung cancer. It causes 12,000 deaths each year. 12,000 people die because people around them are smoking. We interviewed Dr. Graham Place, head of biochemical pharmacology at Astron Bioscience, about the issue. If you are exposed to secondary smoke, as it's called, there's a very good chance that you would be inhaling uh, smoke from smokers, assuming you weren't a smoker yourself. Now, that's passive smoking. And passive smoking, although not quite as dangerous as uh, active smoking, is also known to cause cancer, lung cancer. The other disease that is well known to be caused by smoking is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or COPD. And COPD encompasses uh, a few different lung diseases, uh, but the, the biggest ones are emphysema and chronic bronchitis. You can, if you're a passive uh, if you're inhaling smoke passively, also get COPD. But uh, there's a, a possibility if you don't get COPD, then you may well get lung cancer through smoking. And the same goes for anybody who is uh, inhaling cigarette smoke from a smoker, i.e. the passive smokers. A lot of people don't know that secondhand smoke is actually more toxic than the mainstream smoke. Four times more toxic. It contains three times the amount of carbon monoxide and up to 300 times the amount of ammonia. When inhaled, carbon monoxide rapidly accumulates in the blood, causing symptoms similar to the flu. It will eventually lead to various heart diseases, including heart attacks and angina. Ammonia, usually found in cleaning products and hairspray, can be extremely harmful, and the mere use of it in cigarettes has been hugely debated among scientists. The danger of these chemicals are only increased when inhaling from side stream smoke. Inhaling secondhand smoke will increase the risk of heart disease and lung cancer by 25%. And with 40% of children exposed to secondhand smoke, this puts a ridiculous amount of children in unnecessary and unfair danger. The EPA has stated that as many as 1 million asthmatic children have had their condition worsen by exposure to secondhand smoke. The smoke doesn't only affect children medically. It's estimated that around 22 million children are at risk of learning and reading deficits because of exposure to secondhand smoke. The effects of passive smoking on children doesn't just affect their childhood. Women who were exposed to smoke as children have had a significantly lower chance of being able to conceive and a significantly higher chance of suffering miscarriages. I think. Uh, I think I had my first cigarette at a house party when I was 17. My mate sort of like, didn't force me, but like, dissuaded me in a way. I was quite young. I think I started at school, so I must have been about 16 when I started smoking. Um, I did quit for a while, um, but I got back into it when I came back to uni. Uh, I started smoking properly when I was 18 and we had more parties and stuff. We left school and I was just stressed out with A-level results and stuff and getting into uni and stuff. So, and then after that I just carried on. I started when I was drunk because it felt good and everyone else was doing it. And then I got a bit more addicted to it and carried on. And it feels good. It calms me down. I think it was more of a stress relief thing. Um, I started smoking because 
I was stressed. I started smoking again because I was stressed and it calmed me down. <laughs> a lot <laughs> um probably about 10 more if i go on a night out i smoke more probably around 10. depends how much money i have um or if i'm drinking oh um six okay with six <laughs> Uh, if my lady, if I had a lady friend, she made me stop smoking, or if my mum found out, then yes. Probably won't smoke my whole life. Um, smoke if I got pregnant or probably got cancer or something like that. <laughs> if I was in serious, serious danger. I, I would probably stop if um, I had children, or I would try to. Um, but both my parents smoked when I was a baby, so I don't really see it as an issue. Normal smoking. Normal smoking? Normal smoking. I did not know that. <laughs> I did not know that. I would think that normal smoking is worse only because I'm inhaling it. Babies and infants in particular are at a huge risk not only are they directly exposed to the smoke of parents or siblings, but they are also fed the chemicals in their food and drink. Here is an average 200 milliliter baby bottle. This is what it looks like in a household of non-smokers. This is what it looks like in a household with just one smoker. Roughly 10% of what the baby is consuming is tar. Would you feed this bottle to your child? The level of secondhand smoke a child is exposed to is almost directly proportional to the likelihood of the child becoming a smoker as an adolescent or an adult, meaning passive smoking could eventually turn into a deadly cycle. So we know that cigarettes are very harmful to both smokers and passive smokers, but what about the alternatives? Things like e-cigarettes and vaporizers have become very popular over the last few years and are often marketed as much safer alternatives to smoking. It's often proven that they are still dangerous for the user themselves but are they any better for bystanders? We'll start with e-cigarettes. E-cigarettes produce a vapor, as opposed to the smoke of a regular cigarette. The vapor is released into the air only when the user exhales, unlike regular cigarettes, which release a constant stream of smoke as a cigarette burns. However, this vapor still contains an extremely high amount of nicotine. Dr. Damila Stoltenberg, Director General at the NIPH says, the health risks of long-term cigarette use in the population are unknown. Since e-cigarettes supply nicotine in the same quantities as cigarette smoking, the harmful effects from nicotine can still be expected. However, although they still contain a great deal of nicotine, e-cigarettes don't contain anywhere near the amount of harmful chemicals such as tar as traditional cigarettes. So while they are still harmful to bystanders, any risk to health from secondhand e-cigarette vapor are much lower than that from exposure to tobacco smoke. Another alternative is vaporizers. These devices have blown up in popularity and are the reason behind a great deal of people quitting smoking. But do they improve the issue of passive smoking? In 2011, an Italian company, Flavor Art, carried out a study into the substances found in exhaled smoke and vapor. The measured substances included carbon monoxide and nicotine. The results found that no nicotine was present in the exhaled vapor, and the rest of the substances were far below any harmful levels. Here is an air filter from a tobacco cigarette room, and here is an air filter from the vaporizer room. The report even states that it was more hazardous to breathe the air in any major city than it was to breathe a secondhand vapor. This is very promising for the future. The issue of passive smoking needs to be sorted, and smokers are the only ones who can help, whether that's choosing vaporizers over cigarettes, being careful about when and where they smoke, or even quitting smoking altogether. There are currently 63 million people living in the UK. About 20% of these people smoke cigarettes. All of them are willingly putting themselves at risk. About 80% of these people don't smoke cigarettes. None of them are willing to put themselves at risk. Remember, smoking doesn't just kill you. 
Smoking kills others.